Chapter 16, From the Truth Behind the Fantasy of Porn, The Greatest Illusion on Earth, written by the dearly departed Shelley Lubin, one of the ultimate women's activists that's ever been who dared to tell the truth about the adult entertainment industry. All right, someone just asked a good question. How is it consistent to be against pornography but then to also have an OnlyFans account? Who said I'm against pornography? See, that's where a lot of you fuck up because you're just not that bright and you don't do your research. I'm not against pornography. I'm against abuse and I'm against organized crime, which are two elements that heavily saturate the legal pornography industry. There is a place for legal ethical pornography in this world. In fact, you kind of have to have it because it creates a balance in this world. I'm not anti-porn. A lot of my critics want me to be anti-porn because then they can run around saying I'm a hypocrite, which is not accurate. And you probably are one of those idiots. I'm so tired of people lying about me. She's anti-porn, but she has only fans. I'm not anti-porn, you stupid sons of bitches. Chapter 16 is titled, Marrying Magdalene. A heart-shaped ring, I said yes. I wasn't attracted to him. I didn't really love him, but he loved me. That was what mattered. Besides, where else would I find a guy who wanted to marry a washed-up porn star with herpes and a kid? Shelly, please marry me. God sent me to you. Does God know I'm a bitch? We drove to Norwalk, California on a harsh winter's day on February 14th, 1995. There was no white wedding, only a cloudy gray one. The cold steps of the courthouse were every little girl's nightmare. I especially thought the homeless guy would have made a good flower girl. I'm gonna interject there. Honestly, she shouldn't have married this dude because he did turn on her in the end, all right? She shouldn't have married him. She maybe should have dated him, but not married him. But I think that she was just feeling desperate and she didn't know what else to do. And she came from a background to where women were supposed to get married. And, you know, my advice to women leaving the adult industry, if you want to date upon your departure, fine. But at least after, after you leave the industry for like the first two years, don't get married. Okay, because a lot of guys want to play quote unquote Captain Save a Ho and even and they want to act like they're doing you a favor by dating you or marrying you. And really, it, they're just looking for somebody that they have an excuse to treat like garbage. So just hold off on that, please. <laughs> Anyone that you get with, especially as an ex or retired entertainer. You have to be very careful because for some reason, men have a certain thing in their mind to where even if it's like, in my case, it's been 10 freaking years since I've done any sex work. And still, if guys find out and I date them, there's like this switch that flips in their head to where they suddenly think, oh, it's okay to treat her like garbage because she used to work as an adult entertainer. Really, I blame the parents of the guys when a guy acts like that, I don't really blame the guy. They usually have bad mothers when they think like that. Anyways, as usual, I was in a bad mood that day. <laughs> Quote, are you sure we don't have, have to have an appointment? It's probably too busy today. End quote. I tried to think of ways to get out of it. Reality hit me after that first kiss and I realized this was never going to work. <laughs> No, we don't have to have an appointment. It's the Valentine's Day special today. They're offering marriages all day. Great, the Valentine's special. Gee, what a lucky girl I am, I sarcastically thought. So she shouldn't have married this guy. She just shouldn't have married him. Dressed in a torn black floral dress, I looked like I was going to a funeral. Yeah, my funeral, I thought. We stood in line, then it was our turn. Hello, may I please see your photo IDs? The lady behind the cracked window asked. 
Sure, I said unenthusiastically as I handed her our IDs and the application. I was the one in charge, of course. How much for a marriage license? I asked smugly with a look of disgust on my face. That'll be $35, please. I choked on my spit. Wait, how much did you say? That'll be $35, please. Damn, I thought. That's how much I got paid for my first trick. Then a voice spoke to my heart. $35 to get into the sex industry and $35 to get out. Only God could have known that. I lowered my head and looked down at my tattered shoes. Could God really be rescuing me? I was so dirty and unworthy. And I'm going to pause there. Again, this is why Shelly should not have gotten married at this point in her life. Because her self-esteem was just in the gutter. And it shouldn't have been. And it's our society that does this to women. You, you know, women, any women out there who are listening right now, you are not less than. And you are not lesser of a human being just because you worked in the adult entertainment industry. I mean, by that same logic, you got to say that anyone who's watched the product of the adult entertainment industry is lesser of a human being. And what is that? 90% of the men on this planet are at least within the United States. Okay? It doesn't affect your worth as a human being. There's a lot of guys out there who are looking for any reason to humiliate or tear down women. And they do it just because they're evil, sick sons of bitches. All right? You can't listen to them. There's a lot of women who feel bad about themselves and the only way that they feel like they can ever feel better about themselves is by um, trying to tear down other women and be like, oh, that woman worked in the, in the adult world. She's a whore. She's not good enough. You know, I'm better than she is. That has to do with their own low self-esteem. So, you know, that is a criticism I have of Shelley Lubin is that she did, unfortunately, and I know it was inadvertently, I don't think she did it on purpose, but she did kind of put into people's minds that adult workers, by default, should feel bad about what they've done. Don't. It was just a part of your life path. You know, um, if you want to feel bad about something about yourself when it comes to having worked in sex work, Feel bad that at that moment, if you were abused, you allowed someone to abuse you, okay? I mean, there's some people who work still in the sex trade, you know, in whatever capacity, to where they feel great about themselves, and it is the career for them. I've criticized such people in the past, but I don't anymore. I feel like if that's for you, that's for you. It wasn't for me, and that's just me, you know? It wasn't for me as a performer, at least. So, you know, I'm just saying, everyone has their own path in life. The important thing is whatever path you choose, you need to make sure it doesn't hurt somebody else. That's why there's some people who are like, oh, just let me do whatever I want. No, you can't do whatever you want if what you're doing is hurting somebody else. Needlessly so. That's the problem I have with Aaron Janiszewski. That's the problem that I have with Jan Aaron Janiszewski's family because they're enabling that shit. And that's the problem that I have with organized crime elements within the adult entertainment industry. But there are ethical people in that world who are not hurting people. And that's why I'm not anti-pornography. Anyway. Gary took my hand and led me up the stairs to a bright white hall where other couples waited against the wall for their number to be called. I stopped and stared at the wall, contemplating the huge life decision before me. Evil voices tried to talk me out of it. Gary saw my struggle and squeezed my hand harder and said, you can do this, Shelly. I can't do this, Gary, I can't. I cringed under my breath and turned my pale face into the white wall. Gary put his arms around me from behind and whispered gently, You can do this, Shelly. God is with us. 
it wasn't right for Gary to pressure Shelly into marrying him. It just wasn't because I think he needed that marriage in order to attain validation from his parents, but she was not ready. And I mean, he, he, he was actually a bit narcissistic in this point of his life, at least from my perspective. The voices in my head argued, you're too sick. He will leave you. He doesn't know how sick you are. When he finds out about you, he will leave you. Hurry, run now. Now that might've been the voice of God. She thought it was like a demon voice, but that might've been God trying to tell her, he's not for you. You do need to work on yourself a bit, but she didn't listen. Poor Shelly. A terrible sick feeling washed over me and I felt like throwing up. The voices were right. Yes, the voices were right. Gary didn't know what he was marrying. He didn't know about my sick and twisted sexual abuse. He didn't know how bad my addictions were. He didn't know I was a manipulator and a liar. But see, she's focusing so much on herself. She should have been saying to herself, she doesn't know what she's marrying. He had narcissistic qualities. <laughs> We don't know what kind of abuse he dealt with. You know, he was talking about having a situation to where his father cheated on his mother and everything. Um, we don't know how bad his addictions really were because he was a drug addict. So who was really worse in that equation? Her? Due to her low self-esteem, she thought it was her. But in actuality, it might have been him. Anyways. He didn't really know me. He had no understanding of the powerful hold Satan had on my life. It was a war he wasn't ready for. <sighs> Gary, we can't do this. It's not fair to you. I am not who you think I am. I am much worse. I have so many demons. I will hurt you. Shelly, you can never hurt me. I love you. God is with us. God got Shelly away from him then because he, I think, pushed her into a life that she didn't totally want to do, which had to do with the pink cross. I think that was more of him than her. I think she wanted to help women, but it, it, it was too much pressure for her. I can't, I insisted as I tugged on his shirt and lowered my face into his chest. A voice came out of the room, number 15, they called our number. I looked up at Gary with fear in my eyes. If he wouldn't listen to me, at least I wanted him to see the terror in my eyes. He held my hand securely and walked me over to a black woman wearing a black gown. It was a sign, I knew it. <laughs> Now, is that a little bit of racism from Shelly? I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> at that moment, <laughs> I looked up at him in fear again. His gentle blue eyes smiled back at me. <laughs> we repeated our vows, or should I say Gary did. I was frozen in shock. All I remember saying is, I will. I will? I didn't have a will. I only had death and destruction. We walked out of the white building into dark clouds and pouring rain. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> she probably, I mean, it all was a sign in a way. You, you know, Gary, he was presenting himself as this angel of light, but at the end he turned on her and was kind of demonic in himself. So, you, you know, what happened that day? Oh, poor Shelly. We walked out of the white building into dark clouds and pouring rain. Gary interrupted the storm and asked me if I wanted a hamburger at Wendy's next door. I shook my head no in disgust. I didn't eat meat anyway. <laughs> the mental illness rose up in me and I repulsed Gary with my bizarre request to hurry up and consummate the marriage. It was the ritualist in me. He told me to please wait until I got back home from work. He wanted to take me out to a romantic dinner and celebrate. 
I want it cold, hard, unfeeling sex. I want it to hate him right away. Oh! I wonder if she hadn't married Gary, if she would still be alive today. We'll never know. I got what I wanted. After we finished, I pushed him off and told him I wanted a divorce. <laughs> Get away from me. I want a divorce. I hate you. You're nothing but a male pig. Pain and abuse reared their ugly heads and threatened to throw something and I threatened to throw something at him. He immediately put on his clothes and left. His face was so hurt. I knew I had hurt him. <laughs> Good. I hate it, men. The evil in me was satisfied and we celebrated yet another failure in my life with our favorite bottle of relief, Jack Daniels. He would have left me anyway. I tried to reassure myself with splashes of Jack down my throat. But why did I have an awful feeling that I just lost the most important thing in my life? I felt sick. I wanted to throw up. Oh God, I thought, what have I done? I wanted to die. The emotional toll was too much for me and I downed most of the bottle of Jack. I laid on the floor holding and stroking my bottle. He was my only trusted friend, Jack Daniels. Drunk, I fell asleep. Shelly, Shelly, wake up. I opened my eyes to a beautiful bouquet of red roses with a big white bow hanging in my face. Huh? I tried to sit up. I love you. Happy wedding day, honey, Gary said as he bent down and kissed my Jack Daniels filled mouth. I felt so gross and unworthy. So he was still trying to force her into being somebody that she wasn't ready to be. <laughs> and people wonder why Shelly has some issues at the end. There is a reason. Him. I sluggishly thanked him and told him that I didn't want to go out to dinner. I felt horrible for my awful behavior and tearfully apologized. He brushed my hair to the side and kissed my cheek. It's okay, honey. I know you're hurting badly. I'm here for you. I buried my head in a strong chest and I wailed. No one had ever loved me in my life like Gary did. No one. I never had a mother's love. I never had a father's love. I only knew pain and abuse since I was a small child. I dug my fingernails deep into his skin and squeezed him with every ounce of pain I had inside of me. I, he was my giant cross Someone who could take my pain and let me nail it on him. And I nailed it hard. I pounded him with every powerful lie, expressions of rage and hatred, vulgarities and evil fits. And he took it. He took the excruciating pain for me. He became Christ to me. And I became his penitent whore like the sinful woman with seven demons. Only I have more than seven. I had legions. Black dilated eyes and an evil smile against his chest. Let the exorcism begin. Shelly got a little bit dramatic at the end there. Okay. So that was chapter uh, 16 of The Truth Behind the Fantasy of Porn, The Greatest Illusion on Earth. A book by Shelly Lubin. May she rest in peace.